Preparation The next step in the application process is to provide information on the preparation of the project. Click Preparation in the side menu to access the screen. Describe what you will implement during the preparation period before the actual project activities take place, e.g. administrative arrangements, communication about activities, selection of the staff, involvement of stakeholders, etc. Once complete, the Preparation tab on the left-hand side of your screen will once again be marked with a green check. Management Click Management in the side menu to open the Management section. In the Funds for Project Management and Implementation section, you must provide information about project activities you want to carry out, with support of the grant requested under the item Project Management and Implementation. You will notice that the information in the table is pre-filled with basic information on the organisations provided earlier in the application process. Below, provide detailed information about project activities that you will carry out with support of the grant requested under the item Project Management and Implementation. Usually, these are activities not covered by financing, such as partner meetings or learning mobilities. Thus, you should describe local activities, visibility and dissemination, use of management or communication tools, or any other costs related to management and implementation. Scroll down or access the Transnational Project Meetings tab from the top navigation. In this part, you have to provide a description of the meetings planned. Be specific. How often do you plan to meet? Who will participate in these meetings? Where will they take place? and what will be the goal of each meeting. Describe how project meetings fit into the overall project design and how they are related to other activities of the project. To provide specific information for all transnational project meetings you plan to have, click the dotted line in the table and start entering details for the first meeting. Enter the required details in the form. Meeting title is a free text field, while the info on leading organisation and country of venue has to be selected from the available drop-down lists. The leading organisation drop-down list will contain all organisations added under participating organisations. The country of venue will display a list of Erasmus Plus programme countries to select from. Click the Add button to provide information to the organisations participating in the meeting. Then select the Sending Organisation from the drop-down list, enter the number of participants and select the correct distance band from the drop-down list. Country of Organisation, Grant per Participant in Euros and Grant in Euros will be filled in automatically. To add additional organisations and participants, use the Add button again. Once all the details have been entered, all organisations in the list will be marked with a green check. The Transnational Project Meetings details in the top navigation is also marked with a green check, indicating completion. Go back to the Management screen via the top navigation or the side menu. By clicking the Add button, you can provide details on additional meetings you have planned. The process and information required are the same as was just explained. All the Transnational Project Meetings added will be displayed in the list after they have been entered. The grant for each meeting and the total for all meetings are auto-calculated. To edit the transnational project meeting data already entered, click the menu button and select details. You can also click the meeting title to open the transnational project meeting details screen to make changes. To remove an existing meeting, click the menu button and select delete. To enter details about your project management, scroll down or click the third tab Project Management in the top navigation. Describe how to ensure proper budget control and time management in your project. You can mention how it will be technically done and what tools you are planning to use. Then describe how the progress, quality and achievement of project activities will be monitored. Define specific measurable qualitative and quantitative monitoring indicators that you will use. These should be related to your objectives, activities and expected results. Please give information about the staff which will be involved in monitoring activities. Then identify the timing and frequency of monitoring activities. Monitoring results can be reported during online or in-person meetings and added to periodic reports. Below, describe specific methods you will use to evaluate to which extent the project has reached its results and objectives. 
Define clear and measurable indicators you will use to measure the quality of the project results. Project management is also about risk management. Here in the last part, identify what risks may be encountered during the project and describe your plans for handling them. Implementation Access the implementation part of the application by clicking Implementation in the side navigation. Define how your expected project results will be achieved. You can describe how your activity plan and project design will ensure your consistent progress towards expected project results. Below, describe how you will communicate and cooperate with your partners. Identify communication channels and tools, communication frequency and content. You can define how you will organize communication flow and who will be involved in communicating about specific issues. The last part of this section is optional. Describe here if and how you plan to use tools like Erasmus Plus Projects Results Platform or similar for the preparation, implementation or follow-up of your project. Implementation in the left side navigation will be marked with a green check once information has been provided in all the fields required. Intellectual Outputs Access the Intellectual Outputs section in your application form by clicking Intellectual Outputs in the side menu. The Intellectual Output screen opens. Before you can start adding details about the Intellectual Outputs planned, you need to select an answer to the question, Do you plan to include Intellectual Outputs in your project? If you select No, no further action is required and you can continue with the next part of your application. If you select Yes, more fields will become available. Please note that this drop-down list is automatically set to No. If in the context section of your application you selected exchange of good practices as the main objective of your project. In that case, no further action is required in this part of your application. If you change the answer to no after you selected yes and already added intellectual output details, a warning pop-up will be displayed. Are you sure you don't want to include intellectual outputs in your project? The existing records will be deleted. If you continue, all the details already entered will be removed. So, if you choose to have intellectual outputs, a list of intellectual outputs will open. The first row is displayed and it is empty. To enter details, either click the dotted line or use the details option from the menu button. The intellectual outputs details screen opens, consisting of two subsections, intellectual outputs details and intellectual outputs budget. Now, here you must provide mandatory information about the intellectual output. Enter the required details for the first intellectual output you have planned. Provide output title and output type. Use the drop-down list and note that only one selection is possible. Then enter start and end date. They must be within the project start and end dates. By default, the start and end dates are pre-filled with the project start date entered in the context section of your application. Then provide output description. Mention all aspects required by the application form, general description, elements of innovation and the expected impact that should be related to your project objectives and indicators defined earlier. Finally, describe what the transferability potential of this output is. Who could make use of your intellectual output in other countries, different settings or other fields of education, training or youth and how? Then choose the output type from the drop-down list. Below, describe the division of work among partners and staff members. Identify specific tasks leading to the intellectual output and the methodology applied. Choose in what languages your output will be available. Multiple selection is possible in the drop-down list. Next, choose the type of media for your intellectual output. Multiple selection is possible in the drop-down list. Then choose the leading organization. Select from a drop-down list displaying the participating organizations to choose from. And finally, add participating organizations from the drop-down list where multiple selection is possible. The list contains the participating organizations that have already been entered to choose from. The second part of the intellectual output is the intellectual outputs budget where you must specify staff resources to be used to produce the intellectual outputs. Use the top navigation or scroll down the screen. The list displays organizations participating in this intellectual output, including the leading organization. 
All euro amounts are set to zero by default. Click the name of the organization to access the details screen. Alternatively, click the menu button next to the first organization you want to provide details for and select details. In the intellectual output budget screen, you first see the organization name and country. These fields are read only. In the list below, you must enter the number of working days per staff category. The grant per day and grant requested will be displayed and updated automatically. Please note that if you have one or several staff categories with no working days, leave zero. If the field is empty, the item will be marked as incomplete and you will not be able to finalize the application. Once the items for the first organization have been entered, navigate back to the intellectual output budget screen. You will now notice that the grant details are displayed in the row for the organization where you have just added staff information. Update the intellectual output budget details for the other organizations visible in the list. Once this has been done, the grant for the staff types is displayed, as well as the total per organization and the total for this intellectual output. In the Intellectual Output Budget section, you will have to justify your request for budget for the manager and administrative support staff position. This part is only available after the first intellectual output has been entered. Describe why this specific grant is required in addition to what is already covered by the Project Management and Implementation Grant. Once all the details have been provided in the screen for the first intellectual output, the menu item in the side menu will be marked with a green check. You can, however, continue to add additional intellectual outputs. Now navigate back to the intellectual output screen, either via the side navigation or the top navigation. Under the list of intellectual outputs, you can click the Add button to add additional intellectual outputs. As before, the intellectual outputs detail screen opens. Add all information as it has just been explained for every intellectual output. If you need to make any changes to the existing intellectual output, for example, add a participating organization, access the intellectual outputs main screen via side navigation. In the list of intellectual outputs, click the menu button next to the intellectual output you want to modify and select details. Alternatively, click on the output title. The intellectual outputs details screen opens and you can make changes. Please note that if you make any changes related to the intellectual outputs, for example change the title, after you have already entered multiplier events, you may find that the multiplier events section in your application requires updating as well. If that is the case, the multiplier events section in the side navigation will be marked with a red exclamation mark. The same applies if you delete an intellectual output already linked to a multiplier event. If you want to delete the existing intellectual output, access the intellectual outputs main screen via side navigation. In the list of intellectual outputs, click the menu button next to the intellectual output you want to delete and select delete.